Hello, everybody. Wow. How you doing? Good. I'm ready whatever you are. What's been working the last couple of weeks uh, with like, eliminating explosive plays in the passing game? A uh, combination of two things. You know, guys doing a great job of understanding command and techniques, knowing when the shot plays are coming. Tackling has been better. Uh, generally, we want to be in single digit for missed, single digits for missed tackles. Um, in every game, we've done that in the last few weeks. Uh, so those always help. You know, don't give up the big stuff. Stay on top on the deep end of the field. And obviously, when the ball's thrown or the ball's uh, run, it breaks the line of scrimmage. Just make sure we get on the ground and the missed tackles lead to explosive. So guys have done a really nice job of that the last two weeks. What have the numbers been? I believe for the Philadelphia game, it was seven missed tackles. and this Tennessee game, we had it at six. Those are things that you've talked about both since training camp and the beginning of the year. Do you have any guesses as to why that clicked in the last couple of years? I've been playing longer and then obviously always taking a look at reevaluating your drill work and what you do in practice. Uh, you know, there's tons of different tackling drills and things like that we do. Uh, but the biggest thing is obviously physically hitting something that has some weight and provides resistance. Um, some people call it a vertical sled, whatever. I won't use a term that I use for it because it might be politically incorrect right now. But it's a heavier sled uh, for guys to be able to hit and have to drive their legs. So it, it's a little bit more similar to striking a ball carrier. So they have to really sink their hips, drive for five, and, and, and wrap up, obviously, as well. So we've done that the last few weeks. So if it isn't broke, don't fix it. Is that the one that hangs from the vertical chain? Uh, no. But similar, it's something like that, but it's on the ground. So you have to really get your pads down lower to get underneath it. Have you seen? Clint, any signs that there's some catch up to Devin Witherspoon having to get back, or is it been seen? Uh, I don't know that I would say that because I mean, even he missed a ton of time in the uh, springtime and training camp, and he hit the ground running when uh, we started the season. Like I said, guys are really smart and sharp, and they see football from a little bit of a different perspective as a young player. Um, there's always going to naturally be some form of rust, but I think he'll he'll catch up pretty fast. If Devin Bush has to play more, if Jordan can go, just what's he shown you in the time he's been in there? Uh, another guy that you know sees the ball really well, uh, get downhill, uh, good at striking blocks and getting off. That's a part of his game. I know he wanted to prove on since he had got here. Um, a good feel in the passing game as well. You know, and he's been a violent striker when he's had the opportunities that presented himself. So uh, he's done. He's done well. You know, excited that he's obviously it's a tough transition. You know, a guy that's played a lot of football, and then here he comes into a situation where Jordan comes back earlier maybe even than expected, and he goes into a backup world, but he's handled it like a pro. You know, and now the opportunity there presents itself again, uh, you know, based on where Jordan is at, but he's done a really nice job. How, how did you see Reed Kendall? He obviously didn't play as much the previous week, last week, he comes back and plays the whole game and has a hit at the end and all that. How, how, did, how did you kind of see that? Oh, uh, great maturity. You know, sometimes that happens with young guys. You know, things happen, you know, and some, whether you have to you look at it like you got to grab the attention of a player or, you know, obviously he's kind of got to get some things figured out along the way. I would say that he has and handled it really, really well. Commend him for that. Um, whatever those situations arise, that sometimes the young guys, they have a hard time accepting, you know, con constructive criticism. I'm not saying that was Tariq in any instance, but when those things happen, how do you respond? You know, that's what shows the true character of a person uh, in tough times. So, and he responded really, really well. Proud of him for that. And, and he's uh, played good ball. How impressive is what Julian was able to do last week to not be here all week, fly out Saturday and play a whole game? I think it's way overblown. He didn't do anything. His <laughs> wife did it all. All right, let's get that straight. She's the one that was in labor. She had the baby. You're just along for the ride. I got two kids. I didn't have to do a damn thing. Just stay out of the way and don't make any dumbass comments. You know, that's all you got to do. So he uh, he's getting way too much credit. But on a serious note, no, he uh, – Unbelievable to be ready for the game, smart, on top of his stuff. Uh, it was great to have him out there and obviously excited for him being a new dad. Uh, but she needs to get all the credit, not him. How did Devin handle, uh, Devin Bush, like, handle the adjustment? It sounds like you said the plan going into that game was without Adam to more big nickel and mm -hmm. sort of stepping in for Jordan. Yeah, uh, D. Bush has been handling both roles, playing dime backer in the big nickel spot. Uh, we like to dual train guys just so you don't want to get knocked out of a package just because you lose one particular player. You want guys to learn multiple roles, and uh, he's done a good job of being able to handle both spots if that's what you're asking. So, uh, And there's carryover in both spots. It's not like there's a far departure in terms of coverage techniques and run-fit responsibilities uh, that tie into that. So he's done a nice job. If, if Jamal Adams can make it back this week, where does he fit into things? Or? Same roles that he's been in terms of playing in the big nickel spot and potentially dime. So we'll see where he's at, but he's still in the same in that in that role.
you know, where you can be a dominant factor on the line of scrimmage. The run defense the last few weeks, what can you do to, to clean up some of the guys? Yeah, like I said, the Philly game, we were willing to concede some stuff to be able to protect the edges and not give up anything deep down the field. That was definitely not the plan going into Tennessee. Uh, so we just had some things in, term of, in terms of just alignments uh, and not losing leverage on the football, playing some blocks better at the line of scrimmage to be better. So it always starts edge setting, knockbacks, and then obviously guys got to be able to take their shots and their gaps and, and get things on the ground because with a guy like we just saw, he poses a little bit of a different challenge. You want to make him stop his feet, and we didn't do a great job of that within the game. Um, you know, the first half of it was really where the mess was. They had way too much in the yards per carry. Like, I want to say, like, seven in the first half. Second half, I want to say they had 16 carries for 46, and it was like 3.5 or 3.7. So we got it fixed in the second half, but the first half just left a really bad taste in our mouth. And then I think uh, there was, like, another 30 yards in scrambles. Uh, one of them was a big third down conversion. That was just not a very good play. So, yeah. You, I was going to say, I think quarterbacks have more than 100 yards rushing the last two weeks or something. Yeah, just, just yeah. The Hurts runs the draw like in the late part of the game, and the quarterback scrambles up front. We got to do a better job. The sacks are great; we'll keep those going. But we got to make sure when we play a quarterback that's a nimble enough athlete to hurt us when the pocket breaks down, we got to corral and keep them in there, uh, so we don't let plays get extended. That's been a little bit of an Achilles heel the whole year. I would say this is probably the weirdest, or I don't want to say weirdest, but the hardest part of this role. When you're a position coach, a D-line coach, I could lose my stuff all the time, you know, and it'd be fine and get their attention and be ready to roll. When you're in this particular spot, I kind of got to always catch myself and not do that so I can keep everybody on the same page and not go there. But sometimes it's warranted. You know, that stuff happens and, and they're grown men. You know, it's just, just getting their attention like, fellas, we're better than this. And I'm like, what are we doing and, in Clemens terms? But we get it figured out and get it worked out. But it's you have to have a little bit more of a calmer head, so to speak, more often when you have to deal with everybody because coaching linebackers and coaching DBs is different than coaching the defensive line and how you handle it. So pick and choose my spots. And I don't like to go that route anyway. Teenage kids makes you kind of calm some stuff down every now and then. May have more of a cachet to do that with some of the guys here that because you've kind of grown up with them and been my coach. Uh, maybe so. I mean, they know me. You know, they know where I come from and those situations. And like I said, I'm not like that all the time. So I think when you do that all the time, people are like it. Okay, it gets old. Uh, but that's generally not my approach. But the, yeah, I think uh, the relationships, guys understand where I'm coming from and whatnot. So they are uh, we're supportive of it, and we got it fixed. All those things are great, uh, great occurrences that happen in the game because now you kind of you learn some things. You've been in those situations before, where you got to come from behind in the game or you got to finish the game in the end, like you're talking about. It's great for those guys that have recall because we've been in those moments and those situations before. Whether we finish it, like you said, with the pick or with the rush, I say all the time, rush and, com and rush and coverage complement each other. Uh, so those parts of it are great. Just want to see us pull the full thing together, which is. Let's be consistent with our run defense, and obviously third down is another big part of that. Make things a lot easier when we get all those things tied together. You mentioned the tackling stuff you guys kind of did. Is there, I guess, is there a reason why you don't just do that all year? Is it just unpractical? Or... No, it's not. I mean, what you try to do is you create certain instances that happen. Like if you play a team that's a big perimeter screen team and they put the ball outside, you know, there's things like with uh, sideline tackling drills, leveraging the football and incorporating tackling, and that is what you want to try to emphasize and focus on, you know, and different things, like I said, per pertaining to who you play. But really at the end of the day was it was about us putting our bodies on people. You can't necessarily do it in practice, but to use a sled that has some weight behind it to do that, to kind of emulate that, we had to do. And it was like, you know what? It's been great for us the last two weeks. Let's keep it going. We're getting ready to play another really big back. You know, big tight ends, big physical guys. You're going to put bodies on these guys, and it's going to be a physical style of game. We know we're very aware of how they play, so got to be prepared for that. The hit that Julian uh, on the guy to knock the ball out, it seems like any time, pretty much every time you see a big hit like that where the ball gets dislodged, there's almost always a penalty. Was that a textbook example of how to do that cleanly? Absolutely. Lower your strike zone, obviously always trying to lead with your, <clears throat> with your shoulder. 
it used to be when you were taught how to tackle, you would always cross face. But now, if you cross face, you're leading with your head, even though that may not be your intention. So you try to get near shoulder involved. So obviously, as you see the player coming, he did a great job of taking the correct angle where he made it as a right shoulder hit, and his head didn't have to go across the bow. You know, if he was late on that route, and he does, the refs probably look at that a little bit differently. But it's asking a lot because you think about how fast the game is going. A guy has to process all that information in real time. So it was a great hit. I thought Diggy's hit that he got flagged on. You know, I'm not trying to get fined, <laughs> but I'm just, eh. I don't know if I agree because he didn't have, he didn't have his head involved with that one. I, it made me wonder if maybe they threw it because they thought he could have pulled off. But how do you know the guy's not in position to catch the ball? You know, so those are all the split second judgment things. I, I was I was a little curious about that one. Waiting to hear the response back from the league. Did you, did you have a thought on Trey Brown's uh, interference? Kind of? <laughs> 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 Man, segue into officiating. Yeah, you know. It's a tough one. We just we knew going into the game, D Hop was going to be a guy that was trying to draw and initiate contact. He wants to be physical at the top of the route. That's how he creates separation. I think Trey could have played that one a little bit differently. The double pass. It's not, you know, Christmas was good. Was that you were bringing us? <laughs> no, we uh, we drilled, we worked that because we knew they were a big gadget and uh, gadget team and things like that. We had a couple of double passes last week. Obviously, we missed that opportunity. He should have been in the deep third. It's a good one to learn from, you know, on that one. He, he knew it as soon as it happened. And how do you think about Artie's Artie's done really well. You know, I, Artie is, uh, it's tough when you get a veteran player that's been at one spot a majority of his career. Nickel is not an easy position to play, and to his credit, to me, I think you extend your career because now you can do so much more. Besides just playing a corner spot, he can play the nickel, and everybody's known his whole career. He can play man to man. So, the fact that he understands all the run fits and the zones and his awareness. Uh, Artie's done a really nice job when he's had to fill into those roles. We're really proud of him. Anything else? Thank you. Appreciate you guys. Take care.